Hey everyone, Ari Mapo here, and today we're gonna look at how to use ChatGPT for automated testing, generating automated test scripts, writing libraries and classes for controlling instruments, and then creating test scripts to test the test scripts themselves. So join me as we investigate, take a look and get familiar with ChatGPT for automated testing. Let's get started. So if you're familiar with ChatGPT, it's the artificial intelligence engine that is essentially a way to have a conversation with effectively a robot. Um, you can ask it questions, it can give information back to you. The one thing about ChatGPT, at least for the free version, uh, version 3.5, is that it's consumed all of the information from the internet as of September 2021. This is really, really important. That's a big distinction between other competitors like Google Bard, which theoretically is consuming data on a daily basis, newer versions of ChatGPT with beta at the time of recording this tutorial uh, has the capability of going through websites now, browsing and extracting information. But as of GPT 3.5, it's September of 2021. So I can't ask questions like, what's the weather today? Or ask questions about an API that was just released a couple of weeks ago. That's not going to work. But, you know, very simple questions. Let's just get started. So again, this is like a chat interface between me and the artificial intelligence. You go to chat.openai.com and I can say something like, what's two plus two? Okay, that's obviously very, very simple. But uh, if I wanna start to ask a little bit more complicated questions and you can see that in my article that I have, uh, that I wrote about ChatGPT, I go through some very, very basic examples um, uh, that, you know, give you an idea of, of you know, like, again, what is one plus one? What is the color of the sky? Of the sky? You know, it'll give you a whole bunch of information. But the point is, is that it can answer trivial questions. It can also write essays for you. It can write a speech. It can compose emails that you're looking for. It can write business plan. Um, sometimes it's real. Sometimes it's fake. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's terrible. For me personally, what I really like to use it for is the ability to create code for me on the fly. So super basic things like writing functions, parsing functions, for example, in Python is a huge, huge lift. Um, things that you would normally take a lot of time with um, very, very nitty gritty lexicon type of stuff, parsing. Um, it, a lot of it is brute force. A lot of it is testing. A lot of it is ex experimenting with regular expressions annoying something that a an ai machine can do very very quickly i love it for that another thing i love it for is writing uh tests tests on my test scripts uh, which we'll talk about and we introduced in the video for me what i'm using it for is having it create comprehensive libraries and test scripts to control my equipment when I'm writing some automated tests. So let's say I've designed a board uh, or I'm bringing up a board and I wanna be able to run through a few quick tests. I got a new piece of equipment. It's gonna take me a long time to get the manual, set up the skippy commands, all of this. I just wanna get going. I wanna say, you know, turn on the device, run this command, do this, do that, bada beam, bada boom. Okay, um, before we get into that, uh, one of the things that I, do in general is create classes for my equipment. So if I know I'm gonna reuse my test equipment, in this case, a Riggle um, DP832 power supply that I just recently got, and I want to create Python class that will add setting voltage functionality, setting current functionality, all of that. So I've already written it over here, we'll, we'll run it again. I'm using GPT-4, which is under the pro version, um, it's a little bit more sophisticated. It gives me a little bit better results. Again, you have to pay for that, but the free version is also really great, uh, GPT 3.5. So in this case, I say, write me a Python class that controls the Riggle DP832 power supply. And I can do this again and 
a lot of the times expect a different result. So let's run this in GPT-4, and you'll see it's, it's going to give me a little introduction and say, okay, you're going to use PyVisa, you're going to do blah, all of this. It sometimes takes time, it gets stuck. Um, it's not perfect, but if you see over here, it's giving me instructions. It says, okay, you need to install this pip package, which is basically a Python package, and then here's how you put all the code together. Okay. And it says, now you've put all this code together. Here's how you can use it. So I have a very, very similar example to this. So I have the DP832. This is what came from them. And I put it in here. Uh, again, I copied and pasted. The only thing that I did to cheat, uh, I added one extra line here is I just want to list my resources so I know exactly which visa resource is available so when i turn on my power supply i know the exact serial number and everything that i'm talking to again this is controlling the dp832 over um usb so i put that line in but everything else came straight from chat gpt i can also tell it you know rewrite this code rewrite this code with inline comments so it'll go in there and start to give me better commenting uh better readability. And then as we go through this again, we're going to ask it to write um, test classes for us. So let's jump back. Uh, I've got all of this. I'm now going to try and run that. So Python, uh, run that class. I've got the main function. And wriggle. See here. OK, so it read off of the power supply. It said it and then read it. It happened very, very quickly, but it worked. I saw my power supply turn on, read, and then turn the output off. So that works. And I want to go back to the power supply, to chat GPT, and I'm going to say, which is what I did before, but I'm going to do it again just to give you a um, uh, an idea. So now write a test class PyTest using PyTest full coverage, and you can mock out the instrument if you wish. Because I've already tested the instrument, um, I'm going to use something called mock, which is basically injecting itself before the commands get to the instrument itself. Um, it interrupts that almost kind of like stubbing if you're familiar with stubbing in an embedded environment it's going to interrupt itself and say you know don't actually run that function that controls the instrument itself go ahead and take this function or this return statement or this code or this example send it back and say oh yeah i, I you know i i ran the function don't worry but here's the information so we're kind of like faking things out <clears throat> so over here if you see what it says that um, it's giving us instructions on how to run the mock, how to do all of this, it, it's, it's quite comprehensive. So I have already an example that I ran. And if you see over here, I have this code. So what this is doing is it's testing all of those functions, set voltage, set current, enable output, disable, and it's doing it with a mock. And it's saying, I want you to validate that I am when I run this function, the the power supply class, which is called wriggle dpa32 underscore two dot pi. When I run that class object with these parameters, I want you to tell me uh, and confirm with me that I actually called that function, go in there, and that I called that function with these parameters, with the actual string that hypothetically I would have sent to the power supply. So again. We're not validating the ability to test the power supply because I've already tested that. I know it's going to work on the power supply. I'm testing my actual code that it will send the correct parameters to the power supply when I want to turn it on, turn it off, set the voltage, current, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so I run that, and it runs the test. You see all these dots. That means everything has passed. The mornings, again, this is like straight from ChatGPT. Sometimes you will get code that is a little bit not perfect. Um, you may need to investigate a little bit. You may need to debug. And when you do debug that, you need to kind of have that conversation back and forth with ChatGPT. So in a certain case, 
you might say something like, you know, this was this was great, but actually I I I don't want to test with mock. Um actually don't want to test with mock. I want you to control the instrument directly. Can you do that? So remember, this is like a conversation. I mean, it's a robot. I don't I don't, you know, need to have that kind of conversation like a like a human, but um but I do anyways, just because it's fun. And sometimes it'll give you, it'll say, you know, I, I really can't do that. So in this case, it says, however, I cannot directly interact with the physical devices. So you need to kind of like course correct. It. That's fine. Just don't use unit test dot mock. Rewrite the tests. Without. Because it didn't necessarily understand. What I was saying. So. Here's so here's how it's OK, so it's going to give me an example and say, OK, here's how you would run this test using PyTest, right? And then actually validating that it's working. So, OK, it gave me an example. It wasn't very comprehensive, but this gives you an idea. And especially if you're if you're new to Python, if you're new to controlling instruments, this is a really, really great way of learning how to get familiar with. So if you look over here, look on the screen, um, this shows you how to create, create a PyTest class. Again, here's instructions, replace your module. You can tell it to write inline comments. Um, and so here you're seeing setting a voltage and then we're running an assertion. So we want to validate in our test that we read the same voltage that we set. All of these are using the functions and now we're directly controlling the instruments back and forth. And again, if you're super familiar with this, you've done all of this before, you've seen a lot of my other tutorials doing this, I've done all of this from scratch. But the, the key is, is that I haven't done anything. I haven't written any code yet. All I've done is I've given requirements to chat GPT. And so this is really kind of eye-opening that you can do something like this. And I have to uh, credit our friend at Altium, Mark Harris, for really opening me up to this idea, this concept, he's got many, many, many different libraries controlling instruments that he's written uh, using ChatGPT. So when he showed that to me, I was just totally blown away. So I've been experimenting with this for a while and um, I've, I've been really excited about this feature. Let's jump into one more piece um, that I talk about in my article. And this is just something where I say, okay, I'm gonna give you some instructions and I want you to test, I want you to write a test doing all of this. So again, this is not going to use a class, but this is going to um, control different instruments and write like a quick script. So I've got a DP832, uh, that's a power supply from Riggle. And then I've also got a DL3021, which is a, an electric load. And yes, it's not hard. I could go even find an, a library that's open source. Look at the function for the set voltage for the set uh, set the load in constant current mode on the 3021. Obviously, I can do all of that. Not hard, um, especially if I'm familiar with how to use Python, if I'm familiar with how to use instrument libraries. But wouldn't it just be easier to write three sentences, give it to chat GPT and have it generate it for me? Let's see if it works. So write me a script, turn on the DP832, um, turn on the 3021, set it to these parameters, and then turn off both of them. So it's gonna give me a full explanation of what it's trying to do. It's showing me all the imports, showing me you know, what I need to do in order to get everything set up. And so, and this one is actually creating it in a test format. Now I didn't tell it to write it. Um, I, I told it to write this in PyTest because I wanted to like run this in the test. I could tell us not to run it in PyTest. I could just tell it to run it as a regular script. So if you see over here, it wrote this full script. Now, obviously we need to test this. We need to have both of our devices. We need to know again, uh, the resources. We want to list the resources so we know exactly what the serial number is. Notice that there's a whole bunch of zeros here. 
this is because they don't know the exact serial number of your device. So rewrite this without PyTest and add inline comment. So now it's going to rewrite this, right, with a main and just as a regular Python script. And this was really easy. I mean, you saw it with your own eyes. I haven't done anything. Again, I still need to run this. I still need to maybe troubleshoot through all of this, but um, it's really great. And, um, and it's, it's very, very promising. Again, there are other engines out there. ChatGPT is not the only one. Google Bard and some other folks are coming up with all sorts of really, really interesting artificial intelligence, machine intelligence, machines, um, code, APIs, all sorts of new, newfangled ways of, uh, of using artificial intelligence to help us, um, not to replace us, but to help us in our workplace. So again, we looked at how to create classes, how to ask basic functions with ChatGPT, going to chat.openai.com. And then finally, giving it a formal list of test ex execution to run all of those through our instruments and then running all of that. And then thinking about, you know, ways how we need to debug this. We need to make sure we add comments. We need to go through it. We need to be responsible. But um, this really lifts a lot of, of the weight in order to carry to get started, to get familiar with how to control instruments and running tests using Python and the PyTest framework. So definitely jump into it, have a look, play around with it, and um, have fun. So today we looked at ChatGPT and learned how to engage with it, ask questions, and most importantly, have it do the work for us to create automated test scripts for our instruments and our test execution. We learned how to create the test scripts themselves, create tests on the tests, and create instrument libraries, classes that we could reuse later on. If you enjoyed this video, please take a look at the rest of the videos in this channel and definitely subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.